Here is a 8192 res CCA. It is running at quite low frames per second. How can we make this faster? Let's switch to the shader code. First, in the step function, I will change num threads from 111 to 1661, and I'll explain what this means soon. Second, in the C sharp step function, I will divide the X and Y arguments to dispatch by 16. With these updates, the 8192 resolution CCA now runs much faster. This video shows how changing num threads caused this massive FPS boost. To begin, let us rebuild our software mental model. The grid of computers that I introduced earlier is a useful abstraction, but incomplete. In fact, the arguments to num threads work with the arguments to dispatch to create that grid of computers. What does this mean? First, num threads defines the dimensions of what we will call a work group. For example, if I call num threads 441, then we will have a work group size of 4x4. Second, dispatch creates a grid of work groups. For example, if we now call dispatch 221, we will have 2x2 two two groups for a total of 4 groups. Putting it all together, each work group has 16 cells and we have 4 work groups, so we can multiply 4 by 16 to get 64 total cells. In general, we can multiply the dimensions of dispatch by the dimensions of num threads to find how many total work items the GPU will compute. To test your understanding, try this in your head. Say that you have num threads 222 and dispatch 444. How many individual work items will there be? Feel free to pause and reflect. And the answer is 2 times 2 times 2 times 4 times 4 times 4, or 2 to the 9th, which is, of course, 512 total work items. Next, to understand why changing num threads boosts FPS, we need to look at GPU hardware. Let us make an abstracted GPU diagram. A GPU has many processors, each of which operates more or less in parallel. Crucially, these processors are organized into sets. NVIDIA calls them warps, and Microsoft calls them waves. I'll use warp because it sounds cooler. So we have a warp and another warp, etc. Each warp has many processors. The number of processors per warp will depend on your GPU hardware, but you can assume it's perhaps 32. Now, let us quickly review our software understanding. Dispatch dispatches a grid of work groups, and NumThreads defines the dimensions of each work group. Now, we can combine our software and hardware diagrams. And crucially, the way that this works is, the GPU basically maps this software grid of groups to the physical warps and their processors. For example, because we use num threads to define each work group as 4x4x1, four by four by this now means that each work group will use 4x4 four four of each warp's processors. But if we say num threads 111, we are saying that our work group dimensions will be 1x1x1, one by one by one, or 1, which will then map to using only one processor per warp. This results in most of our GPU processors doing nothing. And this is the reason why FPS increased so dramatically. We can see here in this graph of CCA FPS versus num threads on my GPU that FPS dramatically increases as we use more processors in each warp, then levels off after 16. Now I'll show you a practical example with a texture. Say we want to run a compute step kernel on each of the 256 pixels in a 16 by 16 texture. We can look at our formula from earlier, and because there are 256 pixels, we know that we want the product to be 256. We can achieve this in a number of ways. For example, we can use 16, 16, 1 in dispatch and set num threads to be 1, 1, 1. This will result though in many idle processors on the GPU. On the other hand, we can call dispatch with 111 and set num threads to be 161661. As above, this will also get us a total of 256 work items, one for each pixel, but with much better warp usage. Let's look at another practical example. Returning to this 16 by 16 pixel texture with a total of 256 pixels, we could set a variable called res to be 16. This then allows us to 
divide that number by the number of threads. That allows us to be agnostic to the actual resolution of the texture. For example, it could be 32 by 32 or any number, but we would end up with the right number of work groups because we're dividing res by the number of threads on each side of a work group. And then, of course, these work groups will be mapped to warps. So in general, instead of manually calculating the number of work groups that you want to dispatch, usually you simply divide a number by the number of threads per work group. Of course, understanding num threads significantly complicates our mental model of a compute shader, so I saved it for after you got something working. Now, instead of seeing a compute shader as a grid of mini computers, we understand that we have a set of work groups composed of work items or threads, and that these groups are mapped to hardware warps composed of individual processors. Now that you have this understanding though, I recommend sticking to something like this most of the time. I should also mention that there's more to know here. For example, work groups can choose to share memory between threads, but that is a topic for another day. Special thanks to Scott Anderson, aka Impossible Scott, who gave me invaluable technical advice and useful links that helped me put together this video, and also to Landon Thomas, who helped me piece together some of the terminology. That's all for now. Thank you.